IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV, and I'm here at Hacktivity 2012 in Budapest, Hungary. Now, Hacktivity is the largest IT security festival in Central and Eastern Europe, and it is amazing. Right now, I'm speaking with Dimankash Tamchani. I said that right, didn't I? Yes, you did. Excellent. Um, and we're going to talk about, well, he was here presenting about 3G femtocells. So, Dimankash. What are, what can you tell me about 3G femtocells? Well, 3G femtocells are basically miniaturized uh, cells that could uh, help a customer who is not having 3G coverage at home to actually have 3G coverage by bringing home your own 3G cell. So you could just plug it into the AC adapter and then just plug into the internet and all together it would just create a miniaturized version of a 3G cell giving you 3G coverage at your home. That's pretty much what it does. That is awesome. It sounds like something I could use. I have problems with that in my apartment sometimes. Well, here you go. Exactly how big are these things? Uh, well, what do you mean by guarding them? Well, how, how, how large are they? Oh, they are just like a, your regular Wi-Fi router. So it's just like a small box with a size of like that. Okay. Like, yeah. are, these, uh, are these new? Have they been around for a while? Well, they've just been introduced. Uh, actually, the standard which is defining them is quite old, but uh, operators started using it like uh, three, four years ago, and the main problem is with them, if you're using a femtocell to place a call, your call goes through, a fem through the femtocell. So if a hacker is able to gain uh, access to the femtocell, then he would might be able to uh, listen to your calls, read all your texts, and uh, see all the data that you're using. And there was actually one problem with that in 2009, but ho fortunately, the operator actually fixed that problem. So right now, all the femtocells are pretty much safe. Right, for now. I for know now. Technology and hacking is always evolving. So yes. do you think that, um, could you see any vulnerabilities in them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def definitely, because they are getting more complex. They are, the operators are adding more services, like an HTTP server to giving the user the chance to administer the device at home. And uh, these all new services are just uh, making it even worse. I mean, if you look at them, it is just a uh, lot more complex, giving more uh, attack area, I mean, giving, right. giving a chance to have more vulnerabilities in them. Right. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully they can become secure in the future. And do you see these as something that everyone's going to be using or just people? Well, it is quite popular. So uh, they did a little research study in the United Kingdom where the Vodafone UK uh, operator started uh, deploying these. And they said that they were able to sell uh, 100,000 devices in like two years. So many people started using them. And that's why uh, when a hacker group called the Hacker Shows came up with a solution to gain uh, root access to these devices, that was like a big media coverage and everybody was like, oh my God, what, what should we do? What should we do? And then Vodafone fixed the problem, but more problems still arose. So for example, in the United States, AT&T uses uh, AT&T Microcell and the German hacker was able to gain root access to that device too. So. That is already fixed, but as you see, there are more and more uh, groups and uh, focus is getting on these embedded devices. So we should see more hacks on 3G femtocells in the future too. I oh, know. Was your, was your uh, presentation about um, how to secure them mostly? Uh, no, my presentation went to a little bit other way because I was only able to get the Vodafone femtocell here in Hungary and it's already been patched. So I started to think about new ways to use this femtocell and my idea was uh, the operator is not checking for the physical location of the femtocell, so you don't know where exactly it is. So if I would be able to operate the Vodafone femtocell, which is a Vodafone UK femtocell here in Hungary, I would be able to create a miniaturized uh, United Kingdom version of Vodafone in my house. So I would be able to place calls or send text messages like someone who is actually located in the United Kingdom. So that's, that's what all it was about. So how to become pretty much untraceable using these femtocells because nobody would be able to trace back your tracks if you're using just a small cell. Right. The problem with these 3G femtocells is uh, not just the making a phone call portion of it, it's the fact that they're actually connecting to the internet and so many people have so much personally identifiable information on their devices. Yes, exactly. So since it's just like a regular 3G tower, it would allow your cell phone to connect 
via this femtocell to the internet via 3G and then uh, your cell phone might even be compromised or if your data is going through then everybody who, I mean, I mean the hacker who has access to the femtocell can easily eavesdrop those packets and see all your information. Right, and then with that information they can go on and do so much more access. Yeah, that's right. I mean, information is, is money, exactly. You can say that. Absolutely. Information is money. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. So the hacks that have been done already, were they just demonstrations and exercises, or was any, has any information actually been compromised through these? Well, we cannot be sure because the first hack that was, uh, that was actually uh, carried out in 2009, but the hacker group uh, told everyone and make, made the Wikipedia page about it public only in 2011. So there were two years and nobody knows if someone else was doing uh, a research too or maybe that hacker group did some uh, bad things with it. But actually the other, uh, other hacks I was talking about, they were, they were just demonstrations by researchers. So we are currently not aware of any information leakage that was carried through a 3G femtocell, but we might be able to see such things in the future. Do you think the general public is aware that these 3G femtocells are actually a vulnerability because you know, um, it's giving them the convenience of extra bars on their phone and everything, but it's actually an additional network device. Well, I don't really think it's a well-known fact that femtocells might be vulnerable to such attacks. So I don't think, it, I don't think uh, people know about this. But the main thing with femtocells is uh, not, actually not the user who is using the femtocell is the one who is susceptible to attacks, but uh, let's say that an attacker gains access to a femtocell and starts using it and users would just connect to it because you are not, not always uh, able to tell the difference between you are connected to a real 3G tower, you are connected to a femtocell. So if an attacker controls uh, this femtocell and just dri drives around your neighborhood, he would be able to gain a, a lot of information and stuff like that. So that's the main problem with them. Right. What personal precautions can a person take if they are using a femtocell and they need to use it? What can they do with their phone to secure their information? Well, uh, it's hard to tell because uh, many people say don't use Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is easily is droppable. Use 3G. Well, right now 3G cannot be said it's 100% uh, secure. So I would still say as an end user being home using your femtocell, you are probably 100% safe. But let's say you're just walking around town and you are used to have good uh, quality coverage, 3G coverage at that special place, and then you go there and maybe the network name changes, or you might be able to tell some differences. For example, on the AT&T microcell, it's actually changing the name. So it's not saying you are connected to AT&T, it says you are connected to AT&T microcell. Mm -hmm. So if you see something and you are not even using an AT&T microcell or you don't know what it is, then you should abort 3G connections right there because it could be a hack actually there. Interesting. That's so for end users, just keep using your device, you are safe, but be aware of such things. Absolutely. Knowledge is power. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Will you be here at Hacktivity next year? I'm definitely going to be here and I hope to bring some new stuff too to present all the uh, people coming here. Excellent. And you live right here in Budapest. Yeah, that's perfect for me. So convenient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you too. I appreciate it. And um, make sure you don't miss anything that's going on here at Hacktivity. Make sure you catch all of our videos by go to youtube.com slash secure ninja and subscribe. And then also follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter. Like us on Twitter, follow <laughs> us on Facebook. Well, go ahead and do both of those things in the opposite order so you don't miss anything that's going on. I'm Alicia Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts.